Section three, community. The Wellspring is a resource centre for homeless and disadvantaged people and has existed in Stockport in one form or another since 1991. It moved into Harvey Street in 2009. Our dedicated staff and volunteers provide a whole host of specialised services aimed at both preventing homelessness and supporting people out of homelessness. Around 150 people a day access the services here. The learning curve for us here at the Wellspring, we're very careful on how we portray Stockport. It's a brilliant place. A few years back, we found a young Estonian man sleeping rough in the caves above the River Mersey. He wasn't taking drugs and he didn't drink. He'd answered an ad in an Estonian paper trafficked slave labour in Kent, escaped and ended up in Leeds where he was arrested for vagrancy. The police confiscated his Estonian idea. No idea why they did that. We got it back for him. We think he just walked from Leeds to Stockport. He had no access to any services. Nobody wanted to help him. We did a piece in the Manchester Evening News then the Daily Mail picked it up. They headed it, Cavemen of Stockport. Made it sound like there were loads of migrants hiding there. There was only one. Plus, ITV News and BBC News filmed us with him and his carer. And out of the blue, I had a phone call. His mum phoned me from Estonia. She said, that boy in the news is my son. He's been missing for six months. We didn't know where he was. We, we thought he was dead. So his mum flew over and we went to the Estonian embassy and helped him get all his documents reissued and got him back home. His mum wrote to me. She sent me a scarf she'd knitted. Mental health was very poor. Almost recovered. His relationship with his family is back. He's working now, he's been to college, got his life back and he's safe. So we're very careful about how we portray Stockport. Hordes of Estonians, just one man. But it could have led to a backlash in Stockport. We don't want to paint Stockport in a bad light, but we do want to tell it as it is and publicise the positive stuff. That way with the air crash, June 4th, 1967. The book on it's horrible to read, cowering, but it's a labour of love. He interviewed people that were involved. People wouldn't speak about it first time round. It was only in later years, you know, that they spoke about it. You ask young people today about the Stockport air crash and they don't know but it was a massive thing. Rumours were that the council didn't want to, like they swept it under the carpet a little bit. They didn't want the town to be known for it, but it brought out the best in the community, the church, all religions. I was redundant. A redundancy plus compensation eventually for wrongful dismissal. I had a small overdraft, nothing in the bank, company car taken back. So I decided to become self-employed. The bank manager was friendly. Fortunately, he was a real person you could talk to. I set up an agency selling capital equipment to industry, which was manufactured by others. Expensive stuff. I got my first big order in the 13th month, paid the overdraft back. But in that period, somebody, we never found out who, hung a loaf of bread on our doorknob every day and a joint every weekend. They did it before we got up and left a hundred quid in an envelope at Christmas time. So when I heard that Father Botha was sending up a, a soup kitchen in Stockport, I thought, what a wonderful thing. I couldn't get any benefits being self-employed. I thought, this good person giving us our daily bread, it's my chance to give back. There was a well-known priest at St. Mary's, Father Cornelius Ode Kelly. He'd been a professional boxer, you know, Father O'Kelly? At one time, not only was he champion of Ireland, 
but he was ranked as fourth in the world. Anyhow, there'd been a bit of trouble amongst the congregation. They'd been drinking, you know, and a fight was breaking out. Well, Father O'Kelly came down and laid one of them out. Well, I've no more of that. That wouldn't happen today. Boxing is still going on at Flint, Flint Street to this day. Set up in memory, Father O'Kelly. He coached all those lads in boxing. He'd always say, block the left lead, cross the right. But because I'd broken my arm, if I blocked it, then it, it'd hurt him. So it'd hurt like hell. So he used to say to me, don't block the lead, laddie. You slip the, you slip the lead, cross the right. And then he'd say, left hook, right, uppercut. And then they won't get up. He was brilliant. <laughs> what a great man. And the darts leagues, they were known as the best leagues in the country. <laughs> they still are. You can play at all levels across the week in different venues. Depending on which pub you were playing in, you could predict your meals for the week. If you played on a Tuesday at the Magnet, you knew you'd get black pudding. Then there was the Wheat Chief, the Prince Albert, the Brookfield, the Stanley, the Little Brookfield, the New Inn, the Grove Inn, the Beehive. In those days, some pubs had a particular clientele. The Pineapple, just near the viaduct, that was the busman's pub. The Windsor Castle, Binman. The Hope Inn, Railman. And the Plough on Kale Green, Builders. All the big firms had their own football teams. Avro, Murley, Simon Carves, Arendales, Oilwell, Bennett's Iron Foundry, Benson's, Cravens, Davis Metcalf, and more. And everyone knew Tommy Ridgeway. He ran the football workshops in the 60s. There'd be a week of competition on open ground down the hill from the Star and Garter on Upper Hillgate. There'd be hundreds there. The landlord would have to be calling extra staff in. And it was the town for Hatters, Battersby's Vofton, and Christie's on Hillgate. The workers used to take their hats home with them. Once they were out of sight of the mill, they'd take them off. They won't put them on again until they were on top of the street inside of the mill next day. Dad did unfortunately one spring a trilby home. Being a nosy kid, I just picked it up. We lived in Stockport where you had Christie's, Battersby's, and County were the Hatters. Anyway, I looked inside and it said, Made in Bulawayo. My dad suffered for that for years. Bought anything from Bulawayo, Dad? And they used arsenic, didn't they? I remember it was poisonous. Was it mercury mixed with sulfuric acid? They say that's where as mad as a hatter comes from. My father worked at Christie's Hat Factory. He was manager at the men's end, what they called the dry end. There was a dry end and a wet end in Hatting. Christie's on Hillgate, that area became the police station later. He got them to show me around, which was fascinating. To see the fur being blown onto the cones, the starting of the process. One thing that particularly impressed me was being taken into the cellars. Enormous sacks of rabbit fur. He said at the moment there's probably about a million pounds in there which as a small child, I found very impressive. And don't forget Fred Perry. I remember he used to practice on Sykes Wall. And Stockport had a very famous lacrosse team, originated in Kale Green. Many players played for England. Quite a feat, really, for such a small place. Just before the war, not often mentioned now. 30 years ago, I lost my job in Scotland and got one down here. I told people where I was going, Stockport. Ah, on the coast near Blackpool. No, that's Southport. Up near Darlington. No, that's Stockton, just south of Manchester. People asked me who I was going to support, City or United. And I said, no, there's a team in Stockport. Didn't realise then that they were only ever referred to as county by the fans. No one ever, no fan ever calls them Stockport. It's been a roller coaster ride watching them since the 80s. 
I went to buy my season ticket a year or two back during the dark days. Cycled up to the club on my way home from work. Didn't fancy leaving my bike outside. Well, it is Stockport. I wheeled my bike into the shop and there's George Hudson and Steve Bellis. These are the two guys who run the club and they're chatting away to me. Greet me by name and ask me how I'm getting on. I thought, this is my club, isn't it? You bring your bike inside and no one shouts at you. And you talk to the two guys running your football club. You won't get that at Old Trafford or the Etihad. County is a community. It has its fair share of characters among the regulars. It was the two Arthurs, Arthur Cooper and Arthur Brownlow. Arthur Cooper used to go up and down with the wellies on and Arthur Brownlow was in Crossroads. There was a guy called Martin Lee, who was a county fan, passed away now. And he looked very much like Arthur Brownlow. And we were at Morecambe for a pre-season friendly and Martin walked in a little bit late. And we were all laughing because well, Arthur Brownlow had been killed off the night before in a really bad stunt accident. So we all started singing the Arthur Brownlow song to him. <laughs> Silly, really. But the second Arthur, Arthur Cooper, my father said to me when I first started going to county as a small child in the 50s and 60s, he said, whatever the man with the wellies on shouts, do not repeat to your mother. And he couldn't argue with that because he was a really foul-mouthed little old man. He wore wellies and he used to follow the linesman up and down, swearing at him. And then when they played lacrosse at Edgeley Park, he did the same thing to the umpire, marching up and down the pop side. He didn't even know what the rules were. It was the same at the cricket. He's sitting in his deck chair, effing and blinding. There was one lad, John Hall. We knew him as Captain Beefheart. He was a Latin teacher. When he died, there was a memorial. Masses of people. It was a full house. And I was talking to the priest afterwards, and he said... I was amazed. I didn't realise, and I knew he was a football fan, but when I saw all the people, well, it scared the shit out of me. <laughs> so now we have a Memorial Day. A few of us go every year. Some couldn't get there, so we changed it to the day before the first game of the season. Always a Friday, and now it's packed. The players turn up, the manager turns up. It was just five of us at first, and now we get 50 people just to remember the people we know who've passed away during the year. It's about their memory. I went watching County in 1988, when we were just in the middle of the old fourth division. And within a couple of years, uh, Danny Bagara came in and we were becoming successful. So I came at the right time. <laughs> and over 10 years of success, all the Wembley visits were fantastic. It was just like a big family. Obviously, it's a small club, isn't it? But my brothers went, my mum went, my dad went. He's been going since he was 16, just because it was his local side. Not because his dad went or anything. He just chose to go. So now my dad's been going 60 years. He said when he, want, when he dies, he wants to have a two-minute clap. I remember being in the pop side with my dad and my little flask and my blue and white teddy. <laughs> Actually, I was 12. My daughter's 12 and she wouldn't do anything like that. You were younger when you were 12 then. We certainly weren't on YouTube doing all this. <laughs> we were just kids. We'd all like to be remembered, wouldn't we? I suppose it depends though. I was at a funeral not long ago. We'd had the service in the church and finally everyone was gathered around the grave. And the lady vicar mentioned, we're here to remember Sid, who died. He was always seen with his best friend, Fred, who unfortunately passed away a while back. And there was a cry from the back, no, I didn't. They say there's over 300,000 people here. Different areas, quite posh, quite poor places, interconnected. That's one thing I've noticed. You're only one person from different communities, different cultures. It's the same with amateur theatre and football. It's amazing, it's reach. You find connections, you'll know someone whose dad knows yours who went where you went. That's the start of a village, isn't it? 
Hello, my name is Julia O'Toole. Um, I came to live in Stockport in 1977 to train as a nurse in the then Stockport School of Nursing. Hello, my name is Harry Garrity and I've lived in Stockport since birth in 1996. Hi, I'm Samantha Wild. I've lived in Stockport since 1993, my whole life. David Meller, moved to Stockport in 1969 and lived here ever since. Jimmy Brown, born and bred in Stockport since 1960. Chris Rogerson, I've lived in Stockport since about 1975, moving from Cheadle to Woodford to Edgeley to Gatley. My name's Kat Sharples, I've lived in South Manchester my whole life but moved to Stockport in 2006. Matthew Todd. I lived in Stockport between birth in 1993 and uh, 2018. Stockport Voices was originally performed in 2018. One of the actors in that first production was Keith Fennick. Sadly, Keith recently passed away. He will be greatly missed by everyone at the Garrick. 